There are few joys quite like stumbling across random gold bars in the desert. Believe me, I would know. And the open world of Red Dead Redemption just so happens to be full of the stuff if you know where to look. And so in this video we're going to be doing all of the treasure hunts in Red Dead Redemption. Why are we doing this over a decade after the game launched? I don't know, but the playlist beckons to me. To acquire the first map, we need to await a random encounter between Armadillo and McFarlane's ranch, in which we'll encounter a treasure hunter's wagon being attacked by bandits. You can either save him and be given the map, or you can let him die and loot it off his body. I must have done this already in my playthrough as I just had the treasure map, but I'd imagine it's something that you come across rather early in the game anyway, so it's not going to be too difficult to trigger. The first map depicts twin rocks, and so that's where we must go. It's a short distance north of Armadillo, shouldn't be too hard to find. Once we arrive at seemingly the arse end of nowhere, we need to head between the rocks on one of the rock formations. We'll find the treasure buried under a shallow pile of rocks, and honestly, how did nobody find this before us? And by nobody, I mean NPCs in game, not real life people. I don't believe it! But like that, we've got Rhodes treasure. In this box, we'll find a gold bar and a map to the next piece of treasure, because naturally, at the end of a treasure hunt, there's another treasure map. Jackson's treasure map depicts a cliff at Rio del Lobo Rock, which is due south of Armadillo, shouldn't be too difficult to get to. Now, unfortunately, the combination of a treasure hunt and a cliff pisses me off greatly to the point where I'd argue that they work brilliantly together. We don't want to be directly atop the cliff, we want to be on a lower ridge, which is important, I suppose. Here we'll find a pathway that leads off towards the river, it can be a little treacherous, but you should still be able to make out a path, take it slowly and steady it shouldn't be a problem but obviously I didn't do that but at the end of this trail buried under a pile of rocks is Jackson's treasure now we have yet another gold bar and the map to the next piece of treasure Kaloon's treasure is fortunately very simple as it's in the big manor at tumbleweed so that's exactly where we must go at speeds hopefully the ghost won't catch us spoiler alert there is no ghost. Once we're in Tumbleweed, we've got to head up to the manor. Not difficult at all. Okay. The quickest way in for what we're after is the cellar entrance, as the treasure is in the cellar. Now, it shouldn't be difficult to find where you need to be, as it's marked by a mounted bull skull. And there you go, treasure buried under a really out-of-place pile of rocks. How did nobody find this, especially considering Tumbleweed is infested with outlaws most days of the week? Did nobody think to question the random pile of rocks in the cellar? Oh my good lord! What we acquire is yet another gold bar and a map to the next piece of treasure. Tubman's treasure. For this one we need to sneak just a little bit over the border into Mexico to a tree north of Chuparosa that overlooks the river. Over a couple of stone walls just north of the tree depicted we will find the treasure literally just over a wall from the road under a pile of rocks again. That's going to be a recurring theme, I'm going to shut up about it. Jack's getting an automobile! After I acquired the treasure, everyone in the area, for unrelated reasons, kind of wanted me dead. But not to worry, if anyone asks about the corpses, it was the wolves. Mexican wolves have sawn off shotguns now, it's kind of a scary place. The treasure map we acquired at the last location is Brown's treasure, which takes us west further into Mexico, just a short distance east of Escalera. The location of this treasure is easily marked by a tall rock formation, which we can climb to the top of, though we will need to as the treasure is located at the top. It's a lovely bit of scenery, but more importantly, that's Brown's treasure acquired. <laughs> yes! We get a gold bar and the next map, and so it's time to go. But before we do move on, there's a chest under the rock formation that I thought was worthy of note. You get a little bit of money, and I thought it was pretty neat. Douglas's treasure is located at the unforgettable rock formation Ojo del Diablo, which is due south of Chuparosa. You can see the arched rock formation from a good distance away, so it shouldn't be too difficult to locate. I don't think Mexican wolves like me. Anyway, at the base of the south-facing part of the inner arch, we'll find that familiar pile of definitely inconspicuous rocks that indicates the location of the treasure. I don't believe it! Along with Douglas's gold, we acquire the map to Garrison's treasure. Now this treasure honestly made my head hurt a lot, trying to figure out how exactly to get on top of the cliff where it's located. Where we want to go is here, a short distance north of Agave Viejo, or however you pronounce that, I apologise. There is a path between the cliff and the river, however this is not the path that you need to be on. If you approach the formation from the east, you should be able to get on top of the cliff, where you will find a ridge that leads to a path-like place just below the top of the cliff. At the end of this path is where you will find the treasure. I don't believe it! I think Jack's run out of things to say. Now we'll have Garrison's gold and the map to pick its treasure. Oh. 
This one takes us up into West Elizabeth to a location called Broken Tree, which is just a short distance east of Beecher's Hope, sitting between the Marston family ranch and Blackwater. Once we're up the tree, we'll find the treasure between two stone walls. We'll receive yet another gold bar as well as the treasure map to the final piece of treasure, Stone Walls Treasure. This one takes us up to Nakoti Rock in Tall Trees, where we'll need to take the path up the mountain. Once you arrive at the top, you should find a little entrance to a small cave, inside which we will find the final treasure. There's also a chest in here with a little bit of money, if you're feeling it. And with that, we'll get yet another gold bar, and we'll also be a rank 10 treasure hunter, making us the most legendary treasure hunter in the land, giving us a few perks for our troubles. Firstly, from rank 5 up, we can now use any stagecoach for free. And now that we've reached rank 10, we also have the treasure hunter's satchel which allows us to carry twice as many consumables and the third perk is the satisfaction of being positively filthy rich as you'll definitely be coming away from selling these with a few thousand extra dollars in the bank interestingly these gold bars have varying values Rhodes gold is only worth $100 but Stonewall's gold is worth $500 the rest sort of sit in between with their value being respective to their correlating rank in the challenge another interesting detail to this is the names of the people the treasure belonged to appear to be references to prominent figures in 19th century American history. General Elisha Hunt Rhodes, President Andrew Jackson, John Caldwell Kalen, sorry if I pronounced that one a bit wonky, I have no clue, Harriet Tubman, John Brown, Frederick Douglass, William Lloyd Garrison, George Pickett, and General Stonewall Jackson. I love historical references and stuff like this, to me it's just really cool. But then again, I am in the early stages of starting a YouTube channel dedicated to historical stuff as well, which I can't wait for, and so any mention of history and I just get excited. That concludes this video on the Treasure Hunter challenges anyway. Thank you all for watching, I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to go ahead, leave a like, subscribe, share the channel with your friends and all that wonderful stuff, that'd be super fantastic. And of course, if you fancy it, be sure to check out my Twitch channel. Over there, we do loads of streams and stuff, and it's been a blast so far, and it would be definitely really cool if a few of you lovely sirs came along for a nice chat or two. But if you don't fancy that, then don't worry about it. Just wanted to lay it out there so people know where you can find me. And also be sure to check out the unexplainable shit I've been posting on the second channel if you fancy that too. It's a bit weird, but then again, what did you expect from me? And of course, with any luck, I'll be seeing you all very soon with another video at some point. But until next time, take care and goodbye.